Hello everyone, my name is River and welcome to the show. Today at the Nimiton, we're asking an earnest question. Who out there is pushing to bring people together who are ideologically opposed? Or attempting to form a community of these open-minded types to bring about a more peaceable and productive world? Or even more specifically, who's actually using mysticism to bridge the gap between conflict and comfort? Well, we found one such man, a Hasidic Jewish man named Zevi, who's on the mission of a lifetime called Project Unity. So let's get the insider knowledge on this movement from the man himself. Hey Zevi, I appreciate you coming in to do this talk. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your goals and activities, uh, but I think it'd be beneficial to hear more about you first. Maybe your background, education, or what really pushed you into being proactive about all this? I was raised in a Orthodox Jewish Hasidic home, uh, the Chabad community, for those that know like the different Hasidic sects. And the Hasidic community has a form of mystical study. Um, Hasidot is, is a mystical movement in its essence, beginning in the 18th century. Um, so I was raised with like these core, very rich, very nourishing um, mystical teachings from like from early childhood. I think from age 13 um, mm -hmm. is when we get really exposed to actual text, to, to, a, to real like, you know, Hasidic philosophy. And then at about the age, and I went through the whole educational system, you know, through the years of yeshiva and, and, and all that. At, I think it was the age like 16 or 17, I encountered Christian mysticism, um, which was like totally a very bizarre experience to me. I was 16 at the time, I was reading a novel. I'm almost embarrassed to say who the, who the author, the, um, the novelist was because he's so popular, but it was a Dan Brown novel. And I was, I remember being struck so um, so uniquely and so bizarrely because studying Jewish mysticism in a Hasidic context is such a exclusive, it's such like a insular activity. There's nothing comparative, there's nothing global, there's nothing universalistic about it. And seeing like similar ideas in a, in a Christian context and Christianity for someone who's growing up, you know, Hasidic and Jewish is very much the other, is very much the, the outside or the opposite. Mm -hmm. So seeing similar ideas to what I was studying in, in Hasidut, I was like, where did, how did Dan Brown know? Did Dan Brown like eavesdrop on a Hasidic class that he like got material for his novel? And then I, I, came, like, I, came, on, I came to this discovery, which now is obvious to me, that mysticism is like not just a Jewish phenomenon, it's a global phenomenon. And there are Christian mystics and Muslim mystics and Hindu mystics and Buddhist mystics and, you know, American Indian mystics and, uh, and the list goes on and on. Um, and that was really like a watershed moment for me. Um, and since then, I've been just being really fascinated particularly in this sort of comparative philosophy of different mystical traditions and trying to see the, the shared metaphysical truths that they all point to. Uh, I would like to ask for um, a bit of a breakdown on Project Unity. I, I feel like for, for a couple of years was involved in some interfaith work, um, mainly between like Jews and Christians in, in like back in Australia where I grew up. Um, and then I spent a bit of time doing it in, in South Africa and Israel as well. Um, with some other faiths as well beyond just you know the abrahamic faiths and i found that there was always like a great deal of superficiality in the interfaith like of course like any like pastor or priest or rabbi or imam that was coming to meet in an interfaith setting was going to be like cordial and friendly and nice but like there was no capacity to really speak about you know shared elements of theology in a deep way because you know at the exoteric level the beliefs are so different Mm -hmm. You know, the Christian believes in a trinity and the Jew in a monotheistic faith and the Muslim believes in the Prophet Muhammad. And, and it seems like there's almost no real theological conversation. But there, there's something like that's beneath theology. You know, with all that being said, I'm really just surprised and impressed at how well your talks utilize metaphysics to cross the spaces of difference. It's definitely the exoteric that seems to hold the greatest differences between various traditions. But... In the esoteric side of things, a solid philosophy is simply just a solid philosophy, uh, similar to how I feel like we see similarities between the tattvas and Kabbalistic metaphysics. If there's something which is intrinsically true and experiential in the sort of the in the heart of religion, then there's a place for real conversation, and there's a place for real work to be done to begin to talk about our shared mystical experiences and traditions and and theologies and metaphysics. So. What I was inspired to do was to, to take my own teachings, my teachings, 
and introduce them in sort of the global comparative context to see them not in isolation but in sort of in a dynamic relationship with the mystical traditions of their muslim christian hindu buddhist sufi um druze baha'i neighbors and and to really begin to bring out the human story and and i think that there's something very powerful and transformative in these mystical moments and in these traditions and i think that if enough people are able to bring their own the riches of their own tradition forward and see them as part of a collective human um, almost tapestry then then it could create a really powerful narrative to move forward beyond tribalism and beyond sectarianism and beyond sort of divisive theologies and as much as religion is a powerful force in the world today which it still is and is only getting stronger i think there's there's almost an obligation upon religions to to try and find these tools that will push humanity forward together as a family in the direction which is which is has a shared common goal and has shared vision right. it's i mean it's, it's been too long that religions have been about about war and antagonism and one upmanship and triumphalism um and and i felt so I, for me i felt like that was not an obligation so the, the idea of the project was project project unity seekers of unity mm-hmm. was about bringing seekers you know from all faiths from all practices um even people that aren't religious people that are interested in in, in mysticism in, in this unity aspect which is endemic and and germane to the human experience and begin to talk about it and explore it in a way that's critical in a way that's rational in a way that's forward thinking um and and that's kind of been what the project's about 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 sharing my own thoughts of of sort of comparative mysticism and metaphysics and about inviting people to to share their own because i mean i only know so very much which is so very little from one tradition but if if we can have people coming from all traditions um we could really have a community of people who are really thinking together you know um and and i think a lot of minds combined can do can do a tremendous amount of power you know this has been really amazing uh i i, I greatly greatly appreciate it for for everyone watching you can find the works of zevi and project unity over at the seekers of unity youtube channel he's already got some really awesome uploads and i really am thrilled to see someone going out of their way to try and bring people together and especially to form a community of peaceable and like-minded individuals who still understandably have their differences.